knock him out, and the ball game is over. Adonis Medina with his first Major League save. The Mets gonna split it this big four-game series with the Dodgers. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Shea Station podcast. It is Monday, June sixth. The Mets have just split with the second best team in the National League. The first best team being our New York Mets. We're 37 and 19, sitting in first place pretty. I'm one of your co-hosts of Shea Station, Jolly Olive, and joining me as always is Jerry Blevins. Jerry, what's going on, man? How was your weekend? Oh, it was good, man. Uh, eventful, but fun. Good family time. Uh, yesterday was my, well, my best friend's two daughters, like, share a birthday party. They're still at that young age. Um, so my boys were in the pool all day long and mm. I think they're going to sleep in a little bit this morning. So all good signs. Good for them, man. Happy what what them. a split. What a split. This split feels like a series win. Yeah, it really does. After losing the first two games, it really feels like a win. Yeah. The, um, the, the series we're, you know, it, it's not a end all be all. We're still in the beginning of June, but we knew this is the test of a long run. The Dodgers, and the Mets are the cream of the crop of the National League right now with some other contenders, obviously, but the two best teams in the National League were facing off. And it was kind of a litmus test for, you know, a little bit of uh, bragging rights, a little bit of, you know, uh, if you when you look across the field later on in the season at a, you know, potential playoff matchup, if this gets a sweep, there's a little bit of like a a gleam in the eye. So after losing the first two games for the Mets to fire back, that was a a good series win. Yeah. And things uh, were not looking pretty because the two games we lost were the ones where we had uh, Tom and Walker and Chris Bassett on the Hill were definitely, you know, the more powerful pitchers of the four that were going Uh, to win the Peterson game and the Williams game is it speaks volumes to, I think that like, you know, the resiliency that this Mets team has. I think that Marte said a couple weeks ago that uh, the team likes to put themselves behind just so they can come back. Uh, They didn't (laughs) do it in the first two games, but I think as in the series as a whole, I think that's what they were going for. Yeah, man, he was a little, you know, uh, that was a, one of my favorite lines of the season. And I'm glad you you brought that up because it was like a ton of tongue in cheek thing. Mm. But it's also kind of like the the identity of this team in a way, because they don't care what the score is, who's on the mound, who they're facing, whatever the 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 odds are against them. Some they just they find a way. So sometimes they'll stack the box against themselves just so they can climb out. Uh, pretty funny. Uh, also kind of indicative of of who this team is. A really fun series, one that if they got swept, it literally we could have been talking about like it's not that big a deal, which it wouldn't be because it's a a game, you know, games in early June. But having salvaged that series, it does feel a little bit more impactful just just for those, you know, those teams when somebody like us are talking about, you know, the talking heads of 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 a season. We get to say, you know, they 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 fought back and they split. So it wasn't as big as it felt, but it was also, you know, it, it means something. Yeah, guys, we're going to dive into these four games in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about today's sponsor for today's episode of Shea Station, which is the DraftKings Sportsbook. Guys, you can slide into stacks of cash this baseball season with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. New customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets no matter what, win or lose. So if you're looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the MLB season, uh, you can use DraftKings, uh, DraftKings Same Game Parlays. Uh, I bet on the Mets a lot. It uh, plays with my emotions, but it's something I do anyway. You know, little small bets. It's fun to keep yourself invested in games. And it's great for games that if you're not a fan of the team, you can get yourself into the game uh, with that. Uh, You can create your own parlay by combining multiple bets, like which team will win, how many bases will be stolen, total runs, anything you can think of. It's probably there. Uh, It's your shot and an even bigger payout. And it's safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download their app today. Use promo code JOHNBOY, bet just $5, and get $150 in free bets no matter what happens on the field. That's promo code JOHNBOY at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility, uh, eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for more details. MLB trademarks were used with permission. And thank you to them for sponsoring today's episode. All right, man. You want to get it cranking and use our new recap music, which I absolutely love. Aww. Shout out to Mikey Rotino. He uh, killed it with that. It he awesome. killed it. It's really cool. I, I ended up listening to it a couple of times because uh, I enjoyed it so much. But yeah, let's let's hop right in. All right, I got game one, and it's a rare 
non-game one victory for me. My my record's been pretty spotless. I feel spotless so bad for you. I know. I, I have to go through so much, man. <laughs> uh, so Lindor had to sit this one out after fracturing his finger by accidentally closing a door on it. One of the few Metsy storylines we've gotten this year. Um, there's a fracture in that finger, but he actually would return to the field that's later on, so that's good to see. Uh, Tywin Walker had to work himself out of some tough jams, but he was ultimately pretty good against a tough Dodgers lineup. Five and two-thirds innings, two earned runs, seven hits, one walk, two strikeouts, no home run runs again for Taiwan, which is awesome. 94 pitches there. He had multiple runners on in the second and fifth and escaped both times, so he had five shutout innings. They got to him in the sixth inning, but I still think that's an, that's an outing you can be impressed with and feel happy with from Taiwan Walker. But the Mets, ba- uh, the Mets bats were completely silenced by NLA, uh, NLERA leader Tony Gonsolin, who went six scoreless innings. They got just three hits from Luis Guillorme, Jeff McNeil, and J.D. Davis. Uh, on the bullpen side of things, Colin Holderman was really good. He got four outs in this one. Uh, Shreve bounced back with a scoreless ninth inning. That was nice to see as well. Uh, the Dodgers, they went just two for 14 with runners in scoring position. The Mets mostly got big outs when they needed them, uh, but for the first time this season, they get shut out, and they are the last team in MLB to finally get shut out in 2022. Uh, it was Gratterall, Hudson, and Kimbrell who locked down the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Kimbrell's kind of had our number forever. Uh, so the Mets dropped this one 2 nothing and kind of a quiet loss. Yeah, a, a rare loss. Um, again, the, the big news was Lindor because it a fracture, got shut his hands in the hotel door, shut his hands. It's, it was wild. We're like, you know, he's between him and Pete, he was our Iron Man. So to see him come back later in, in the series was nice. Yeah. And it was really interesting to see um, how much that lineup missed him with just one game off. And I don't think it's coincidental at all that the Mets got shut out for the first time uh, the entire season, the one game that Francisco Lindor missed. He's your RBI machine. It makes perfect sense. Yep. And so the Mets fall 2 nothing in that one. That brings us to game two. Chris Bassett looking to even things up on the series, uh, facing off against a newly revamped Tyler Anderson, who looked hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Chris Bassett fell victim to the long ball here. Uh, he gives up a two-run shot in the second, another two-run shot in the fourth, gives up his final line, looks better. Uh, goes six innings, four runs, uh, three of those only earned. Uh, gave up five total hits, two walks, eight Ks, but those two big home runs were the telltale sign. Um, following that up, it's still 2 nothing. Top of the seventh, the Mets look like they have a little bit of fight in them with a Pete Alonso home run to make it 4-1. to one. But in the bottom, it, um, the Jolie Rodriguez falters a little bit, gives up one himself, and then uh, Steven Nagosik gives up another one. And the Mets go quietly, losing game two, 6-1. to one. Um, No real fight in the offense. Uh, They only had one guy had multiple hits, and that was uh, Eddie Escobar, who looked pretty solid at the plate. And then the the only run that we scored was on that Pete Alonso solo shot in the seventh. But other than that, the bats go quietly, and we fall 2-0 in this this pivotal series and a long uh, road trip to the West Coast. Yeah, and it's it's not... Uh, far-fetched to think that the Mets would struggle against these two starters. Gonsolin and Anderson have been really, really good for the Dodgers this year. Uh, Heaney was another one that was good. He went down with injury. Um, But not a lot of clutch inning, not a lot of rallying in their bones in these two. Uh, And it's a shame because you got two pretty good bullpen performances in both of these games. Nagosa gave up uh, his first run of the year, which is kind of a toughie. Uh, You hate to see that. Yeah. It it, it kind of felt, you know, Anderson had our – he looked really good. Yeah. And this is more what the Giants do – and find a guy that's kind of, you know, good stuff, peripherals, and there's kind of been a, an average starter and allow him to be great. And he looked really good. He went six, gave up only three hits, five punches, no walks, no real threats, you know. Um, he was pretty pissed to come out of the game because he was dealing, I think, what was his scoreless streak, like 20? Up to 25 innings now, 25 which is incredible. innings straight scoreless. So he's feeling good. Um, they pulled him early and we immediately, you know, Alonso get on, gets on the board. I think it was the, the leadoff home run in the seventh yeah. there. And Alvarez. it looked, yeah, it looked like Excuse we were me. about to, uh, to rally back, but again, uh, just didn't, didn't have it in the cards in game two. Yeah. So that brought us to game three backs against the wall down to nothing. Uh, we burned our first two great starters in this one. It was over to David Peterson who struggled in his last start as well. Uh, luckily we have Lindor back in the lineup. We had him in game two and he homers off Walker Bueller in the first inning of this one is ninth home run of the year. So that gives the Mets their first lead of the entire series in all three of these games, uh, just their second run as well. 
In the second, though, it looked like things were going to get ugly again. Uh, we got a potential double play ball. I'm not sure if they would have turned it, but they, you definitely would have gotten out, which would have led to a sooner end to the inning. Instead, it's muffed by Pete Alonso. Uh, it turns into a fielder's choice. The Mets get no outs or run scores. Uh, the Dodgers would later load the bases when they should have been out of the inning. They take advantage of that extra out, which is what good teams do, and Mookie Betts doubles to bring home three runs off David Peterson. That makes it a 4-1 to one game. Only one of those runs are earned off Peterson, so you got to feel from there. That kind of derailed his entire outing. He would last just one out into the third inning. Uh, he would allow one earned run, four runs total, two hits, four walks, six, uh, six strikeouts on 90 pitches. So a really high count kind of killed him there. Uh, really interesting uh, move by Buck, which I think perplexed a lot of people when it first happened, and it kind of makes sense in retrospect. Uh, Peterson was facing bets for the second time. He allowed a rocket of a foul ball that probably would have been a double if it was fair. Uh, mid at bat, Buck decides to yank him. He's seen enough. He brings in Colin Holderman, who's been an absolute revelation for this team. Holderman strikes out bets like it's nothing because he's cool and collected. It's insane. Uh, so they get out of that jam. They don't allow any more runs. And they kind of hold the Dodgers here. So I think that move kind of worked out in the long run, uh, even though it really was uh, damaging to, I think, the psyche of David Peterson. Hopefully he bounces back next start and uh, sharpens up. But the Mets, they finally uh, they finally wake up in the third inning. Uh, they're down 4-1. to one. Uh, A pair of walks set up a Marte RBI double and Lindor RBI ground out and then Alonzo smacks a two-run homer off Walker Buehler his fourth home run in 14 at-bats against Walker Buehler which is an insane stat knowing that Walker Buehler owned him in college apparently that's something he talked about in the post game so it's really nice for Pete to get some retribution there uh, we talked about Peterson getting bounced after seven outs well Buehler only lasted two and two-thirds so it's not like he did much better there so this became a bullpen game. Eduardo Escobar followed up in the fourth with a solo home run. That made it 6-4. to four. And then Alonso came up again with runners on in the seventh inning against Bruce Star Gratterall and smacked a three-run homer, his second home run of the game. That put him in the lead for NL uh, for RBI at 53 and tied for first in home runs with Mookie Betts on the other team at 16. And another crazy stat, Pete Alonso has nine home runs this season with runners in scoring position, four more than any other player in baseball. So that just speaks to his clutchness this year. The Mets' bullpen, who I talked about in Game 1, they were really good then. They were really good now as well. They cruised in dominant fashion. Holderman, Ottavino, Shreve, Drew Smith, Joely Rodriguez, and Seth Lugo combined for five and a third scoreless innings. Holderman is now 3-0 on the season with a 0.82 mark after striking out bets. The Mets win this one 9-4, an absolutely essential win to set up a pivotal Game 4 that we'll get to in a second. A yeah, big win, and like you said, the the bullpen really came through. David Peterson didn't pitch horrible. I think he was more upset. I got a lot of uh, questions on Twitter mm. about Buck pulling him after that one pitch. Um, I imagine it's because they had a game plan going in not to throw the ball anywhere in the zone to Mookie Betts, who's who's you know between Alonso. Uh, Machado, Goldschmidt, and Mookie Betts, these are the guys that are looking like the, the early MVP favorites, and, and Mookie Betts looks the part. So I'm sure the – what my understanding was, the approach was, let's just kind of pitch around this guy. And so he threw him a first-pitch breaking ball, was probably supposed to be in the dirt to see if he chases, then put him on, but he left it up, which means he's not spotting his ball. And so he yanked the ball just foul, and – Buck was like, all right, all right. If I, if I don't take him out now, again, that's an instinct thing. If I don't take him out now and he gives up a big hit and we fall back further, I'm going to be mad at myself. So he went out and got him. And I think, I think Peterson was angry with himself kind of uh, at the, at what happened. I don't think there was anything about Buck doing it, but that's what you do, especially as a pitcher. You think about if you have uh, a pitch selection in your head and then you're doubting it right as you're throwing it bad things always happen so you have to be confident in your choice and I love Buck going out there because he's like all right uh, in my head I want to switch it so let's just go do it I appreciate it all the more because Buck's Buck's our guy so yeah is that something that ever happened to you in like the entirety of your career mid at bat uh, I'm sure it did I'm sure I don't remember it happening uh it would be kind of a weird thing yeah. it's one of those like it's not an unwritten rule, but it's one of those things that you're like, all right, you made the decision going into the at bat. So you allow that to happen. I've seen it happen a bunch to the detriment of the team where I'm in the bullpen uh, getting ready for a lefty hitter and our starters in and like the sixth inning he's been cruising. But if this spot comes up, you know, he goes one, two quick outs and I'm the fourth guy. They're like, okay, 
He's up 0-2, gives up a double, and now that spot comes up. But he's looked great. We have Jerry ready, but the starters looked really good. Let's give him a chance. And then they, like, hit a double. So I think that's what happened a little bit. I think uh, that foul ball was, like, the tipping point uh, that, that really tipped the scales. And Buck was just like, okay, yeah, let's make a decision. So I don't remember it happening, but uh, but it definitely did. And I don't think it's like far fetched to believe that if the ball just had went fair or bets singled later in the at bat or what have you, uh, Peterson probably would have got pulled after the at bat entirely. So I don't think it was much damage there to just yank him in at bat. Obviously, Peterson had a pretty upsetting reaction to it. He was frustrated with himself, I think, more than anything, not really his coach. Um, but I'm confident he'll bounce back. It's it raises an interesting question because we're going to talk about it in a little bit. But Tyler McGill started for Double A yesterday. He's rehabbing. He's on his way back. That means one of these guys is getting moved from the rotation. We don't really know who it is yet because a certain someone did a really good job in game four. So, man, look at you. What a segue. Hey, what's up? Transitions. Well, what a pro. Uh, that brings us to game four. Uh, I just want this music to play. I'm all mm. for it. Trevor Williams versus Julio Urias. And we needed this game four. Didn't need, but it was nice. But Trevor Williams, who's been doing a good job filling in, as you aforementioned, uh, in the rotation, uh, didn't look great because right off the bat in the bottom of the first inning, Trey Turner hits a two-run bomb to put the Dodgers up 2-0, and it seemed like this might uh, series might get away with just one slip. But Brandon Nimmo on the top of the second uh, leaves the bases loaded with a chance to to put it up, and it just kind of felt like that might be a thing. So it's still 2-0 Dodgers. That brings us to the top of the third where Starley Marte says, not just quite yet, we will not go quietly into the night. He hits a home run to make it two to one uh, Dodgers. Uh, Trevor Williams pitched wonderfully after that first inning. He ended up going five, giving up six hits. Those two earned runs from the Trey Turner home run, zero walks, zero trouble after that for the real part. He gave up that home run and had five Ks, just a stellar outing. Uh, that followed up Adam Adovino, Steven Nagosek. Um, they really pitched well. That brings us into the top of the eighth. It's still two to one, Dodgers. Lindor hits a leadoff double. Um, Alonso, our RBI man, steps up, hits a double himself to score Lindor, that making it 2-2. Um, J.D. Davis grounds out, moving Alonso to third base. Uh, which is big with less than two outs, giving Eddie Escobar a chance to hit the sack fly, and he came through. That makes it three to two good guys. Um, following that up, uh, Luis Guillorme gets on base with what he does. He has a walk pushing Canna, uh, who just got hit by a pitch in the scoring position at second, and Tomas Nito smacks a single to make it th uh, four to two Mets. Nito quietly uh, hitting 391 with 10 RBI and runners in scoring position this season. Look at that Jerry stat. Hell yeah. He's overall not like <laughs> not hitting great, but when the game's on the line, you know, Tomas Nito coming through 391 with runners in scoring position. That's really good. That is fantastic. And it's not a small sample size. Like we said, 10 RBI. Uh, that makes it four to two Mets. Bottom of the eighth inning in walks Edwin Diaz to pitch. What? He's our closer. What are we doing? No, uh, Buck Showalter knows what he's doing because it's the heart of that Dodgers order coming in. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner coming up. Edwin Diaz closes them out one, two, three, uh, leaving it four to two and looking like a genius. Um, that brings us into the bottom of the ninth for a safe situation to even the series. Seth Lugo comes in. Uh, four to two, uh, Will Smith steps up, smacks a home run right off the bat, four to three. Not a bad pitch, Will Smith going with it. Uh, maybe the best hitting catcher in- I'd say so. In, maybe, yes. maybe Wilson Contreras, like Wilson Contreras is having a good Wilson season. Wilson Contreras uh, is doing his thing, but Will Smith, the young stud behind the plate, uh, doing big things. Um, so it's four to three, Seth Lugo gets two more outs. Chris Taylor hits a double, then Olympic torch carrier Eddie Alvarez ties it on a single, making it 4-4 after those two quick outs. We thought we were going to get away with it. We didn't. Seth Lugo gets the third out, but it's now 4-4, four four, moving into extra innings. The Ghost Runner with Pete Alonso's blazing speed on second base. J.D. Davis smacks a double. 
hits it to Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor kind of has this weird sinking line drive. I don't know what to do. It kind of short hops and bounces up. Alonso uses those wheels that he's known for to score. Uh, J.D. Davis slides into second base, um, hitting that. Go The Mets go up 5-4 to four off of Craig Kimbrell, who, like you said, has had our number since his days in Atlanta. Uh, and that brings us into the bottom of the 10th. Coming to the mound is Adonis Medina with a 5-4 lead, the ghost runner on second base, the heart of the Dodgers order up. Uh, Mookie Betts gets this fly out after a good battle, uh, does not advance the runner on Starling Marte's uh, you know, arm, so it's a runner on second, one out. Freddie Freeman grounds out to second base, uh, moving the runner to third with two outs. After a weird catcher's interference from Trey Turner, where, you know, it was like a check swing. I actually like the fact that on the broadcast, Gary and, and Ron was saying we want him to swing the bat, but it pushes him into scoring position because he stole second base. That's runners on second and third, two outs. Will Smith steps into the plate, the guy who was the hero that hit the home run in the ninth to make it 4-3. Um, not today, buddy, because Adonis Medina does a magician's thing, gets him to, to to strike out. It was a wonderful save. So impactful to leave that runner on second base. The Mets win 5-4, to four, even the series 2-2. Two, two. Good feels, getaway day, happy day for the, the New York Mets to go 2-2 two and two on, that road, uh, on that first series of a long road trip against the second best team in the National League the Los Angeles Dodgers. Very, very nice recap. There are so many things to say about this game. In a more normal year where the Mets are still good and they're winning games, this might be a game of the year contender, but you already have the no-hitter, the seven-run comeback, the Giants game, all those things. So this kind of just falls in the bunch. What, um, what are we calling the no-hitter? It's not a no-hitter, right? I uh, No, no. Oh, sure. no. Oh, no. That's Kono. what it was. I loved Kono. We got to bring yeah, that back. Kono. Love I was Kono. like, wait, no, no, that's wrong. Kono. That doesn't sit right yeah. in my brain. I forgot. This feels like it should have been like a bigger win, but uh, look at you. You and me mashing mugs with the Shea Station mug. Just before, I, just I love it. That. Uh, <laughs> it felt like it was a big win, but even better, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was yeah. just another game. Like it was an exciting win. But they had some great performances. Trevor Williams pitched great. We had some big hits. We had a fight back, and then Adonis Medina was fantastic. That was a huge outing for him. His first career save in a big situation with a runner already on second base to go through that part of the order, fantastic. But they were just like, you know, this is what we expect, which is amazing. Yes. Like, I can't get over the feel of this team because they're like, you know, it's just a game, man. Yeah. We expect to be doing these things. Uh, awesome. Just a great series. Yeah, Eddie Escobar in the post-game presser said it felt like a playoff atmosphere. Watching at home, it definitely did. A lot of people were like, this would make for a pretty good NLCS, and I definitely agree. How about Adonis Medina, man? No one left in the Mets bullpen. No one behind you. Betts, Freeman, Turner, Smith. Runner on second already. Good luck. Go figure it out. And he did. Uh, Ten pitch at bat against Betts. He had to battle him. A bunch of foul balls. The biggest out for me, though, was getting Freddie Freeman to ground out on one pitch. That could have been another battle. It stretched that pitch count. Maybe you're more labored by the time you get to Turner or Smith, and maybe you don't get that out. Maybe you don't have your best stuff. So I thought that was pretty essential. Um, Eddie Alvarez is a new Met killer. I don't know if you've heard on the streets. Um, what an awesome story, man. If you I guys agree. followed the Olympic team at all. Yes, you know, it's a great some, story. There's some Mets fans that followed him because of Todd Frazier's involvement. Uh, he's a speed skater Olympian and now he's a baseball medalist like yep. just a cool story sorry he's for the Dodgers so you can't really root for him but I mean he's got a feel good vibe to him uh, I've heard nothing but great things he literally was the torchbearer for you know yeah. he carried the flag and the ceremony so cool what an honor uh, but I don't want you to ever get a hit off the Mets again <laughs> like, I, I was about to say, if you're not a Mets fan, it's incredibly easy to like this guy. But he has 21 career hits, and 11 of them are against the Mets. Over half of his career hits have come against us <laughs> for two different teams. That's an incredible stat. Yeah, man. But again, what a what a cool series. It was good. Better for the fans. Better for other talking heads like us to talk about it. But the better part of it is that it just felt like, you know, this is what we do, man. 
Yeah, and like that's I think that's exactly what you want because if these these two teams are going to face again, which I think a lot of people think so and a lot of people hope for, uh, you want it to be on a grander stage where I think the bragging rights can be settled. So I think a split is perfect for like the narrative of Mets Dodgers for sure. Uh, a couple other things I loved, Adovino is now more of a fifth to sixth inning guy. I thought he looked a lot more comfortable there. I thought he had some of his better innings of the year. Still facing some tough hitters, but I liked him uh, sort of in the middle of things there. And then Alonzo and Lindor, man, the dynamic duo. And in the, in the blink of an eye, tied this game in the eighth like the Mets had been close the entire time. When in reality, they were getting kept at bay once again for the third game in this series. Uh, and they just made it look easy. A really nice rally there. That Nito runners in scoring position stat is crazy. Uh, I think he has the Lindor RBI gene in his blood or something. Um, and the weird thing is that, you know, you feel really good about this split. But you look at our apple of our eye candidates. Not a, not a crazy stat sheet for pretty much any of them. This was just a good, solid team effort to scratch out the wins in game three and four which is the toughest route to get this split for sure because you have to win two in a row with two lesser starters against you know one of the best teams in baseball. These guys did it, um, and I'm, I'm really proud to be a Mets fan today. I'm feeling very proud. Good, yeah. It was, it was a good, uh, excellent game. This is, these are the moments that you, you're not going to just have dominance from the Mets against a really good team with a great, you know, they're, they're stacked from the pitching side all the time. Um, so you're not just going to get, you know, nine for nine for 12 on the series because yeah. they'll end up being smart and pitching around a guy or whatever the case may be. But, uh, do you want to pick the apple? Yeah, man, let's do it. Apple. Of our eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'll let you go first. You're the man hit lead off. In my opinion, there's two choices. Uh, Lindor had a good series after fracturing his finger. I really want to commend him for coming back so quickly after an injury that easily could have sidelined him for a little bit. He went three for 13, hit a home run, two runs, two RBI, and a walk. Eddie Escobar, aside from game four, was really good in this series. Uh, Four for 15, a home run, two RBI there. Trevor Williams, it might be his last start in the rotation. We don't know who's getting bounced, him or Peterson, uh, but he went five innings, two in runs, five strikeouts, no walks, six hits. Uh, For me, it comes down to uh, a guy who did it all series long and a guy who did it at the very, very, very end of the series. Um, And I want both these guys to get love, so I'm going to go with the more of a wild card choice, and I'm going to pick Adonis Medina. Um, I may, I'm, we may not get. Let's clap for him first. Give him a little love. Let the obviously. people cheer. We may not get another chance to give him an apple, so I want to give it to him here because I really think that uh, this was the best performance of his career, the biggest inning of his career. Uh, and uh, I think a great thing that Gary said on the broadcast was that Adonis got his first win in the seven-run comeback against the Phillies, and he gets his first save uh, in this crucial Game Four against the Dodgers. Oh. Um, what an eventful, I, I what an eventful a moment. A great start for his Mets career. He had to bounce up and down, uh, and he was the last guy on the depth chart in this bullpen. This is a Mets team that used all 26 men this series. Nobody got uh, scraps, I think. Everyone was involved in some way, and I don't think Medina thought that this was going to be his role. Um, but, you know, next man up. That's kind of the moniker of this team, and he was the next man up, literally the only man up uh, yeah. for that 10th inning, and I think that... It could have very easily gotten out of hand. The Mets got him that one run. But, you know, you're facing three potential MVP caliber players in a row with a runner in scoring position that you're not responsible for. Um, And he did it. He looked like he had been there before, which I think was awesome. And, you know, if you're trying to, you know, stay on this roster for the long haul and be a part of this team that wants to contend for a championship, those are the kind of outings that really turn heads and get a manager like Buck Showalter giving you more attention. So shout out to Adonis Medina. Great save. Adonis Medina. Great save. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about him for a quick sec. Awesome, man. You, you, You said it looked like he'd been there before. It really did. He battled through some things. Mookie Betts, that at bat, Mookie Betts spit on a couple of pitches. He threw an unreal changeup with two yeah. strikes that Mookie didn't swing at. And that would have phased me where I'm like, damn, man, I threw the perfect pitch, exactly what I wanted. He had never seen me before. That's a swing over all day long. Uh, and he didn't do that. Uh, and he didn't let it affect him because he got him out again later in that at bat. But just, just a great battle. Um, I'm glad you picked him because I was going to make sure that if he didn't, if you didn't pick him, I was going to pick him good, because good. that spot was huge after, you know, Lugo had faltered. Um, 
and then Edwin had already thrown in the eighth. It was big, so I'm glad he did it. That brings us to my apple, the apple of my eye, none other than the polar bear himself, Mr. Pete Alonso. Five for 18, three huge home run, seven huge RBI, five runs scored. Fantastic. He loves hitting. Uh, I love watching him hit. He did it in big moments. He did it in small moments. The guy rakes. If he played in that ballpark, I think he would hit 600 with a million home runs per season. <laughs> just, just a roundabout That's average. Accurate, I think. Yeah. Uh, he really is the heart and soul of our order. You know, Lindor gets a lot of love and he deserves it. But he's our he's our, our big bopper in the middle of that old school home run hitting, driving in runs. I love watching this guy play baseball. Um, good for Pete Alonso. He is the clear winner for me. I'm glad that you picked Medina so I can give Pete the proper love because we've almost gotten to the point to where we're just like, yeah, we want to pick somebody else, but he deserves it. The apple of my eye is Pete Alonso. Very, very nice. Uh, I got a lot of mixed opinions when I tweeted that uh, Pete Alonso is a serious NL MVP candidate. I think a lot of people. Oh. Nah, I know. I know. I know. I am for it, man. I am yeah. for it. Yes. Yeah, there's so many like metrics. First of all, uh, a a first baseman doesn't get enough love if you're good because if if anybody that's ever had a bad defensive first baseman, uh, you know how tough it is. Well, I don't think I'm trying to think of recent Mets. I mean. Uh, Duda could pick it. Duda's uh, solid over there. Again, solid, the, yeah. the World Series throw, you might feel a That's certain people way about remember, it. I, I think, feel like yeah. Duda is a, is a completely underappreciated Met. Yeah. I think his career, uh, when you look back on it in retrospect as a New York Met, is incredible. He's a, he's He was crushing home runs. He played. He's an awesome teammate. Played a really good first base from the pitching he received, side. I think he got MVP votes once too. Like he had a solid awesome career. man. Uh, so he was good with the glove. Who who else did we have over there? I mean, Pete Alonso is is serviceable. Again, not great. He, there was a couple of picks that I feel like he should have made. It's mostly the double play ball for me. That's that's about he, it. He goes too far to his right sometimes, but he'll make some plays. But he also had a – I can't remember what it was, but I'm watching it in slow motion where if he goes out and picks the ball off the ground, the guy's out at first, but instead he tried to play it back here mm, mm. and it became an infield single versus like, you know, an error or – it's just – his instinct, he's a battler over there. He Everything that he does over there is because of repetition. Nothing's natural. It's not pretty at first base. He worked his ass off to be able to be as good as he is at first base, which is why I think he takes pride in it, and he, he doesn't want to DH all the time because he knows how hard he's worked. And like I said, defensive first basemen don't get enough love in the MVP vote. It's just kind of a throwaway stat. I think it's bullshit, but I love Pete Alonso. He's he's a throwback player. Yeah. And from the from the era when I grew up watching, you know, Jim Tome, um, Jason Giambi, these guys that are just boppers. And, you know, they became I, I would rather give it to him who hits 50 home runs and 140 RBI than to a guy that hit 22 his OPS plus is great he's a better defender I just like some wow stats in my MVP and Pete's putting up wow numbers so I like that call I mean he's first in RBI uh he's tied for first in home runs for the NL like he's right up there with everybody else the thing that I love um uh, in that, uh, I think it was game two, where I know game one or game, sorry, game three, excuse game me. Game three, game where five, Peterson game started. two, game, game one, game five, game six. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, Peterson started. He gave up the four runs, three unearned because of Pete's error. Pete completely offset it by just getting five RBI, and he completely offset the three runs that he sort of played a role not, in allowing not the score. In Peterson's eyes, he didn't make not in ball. Peterson's <laughs> eyes, but in my eyes, I'm like, okay, I, I apologize for the runs I let up. Let me go hit two home yeah. runs and five RBI and I'll just take care of it. Don't even worry about it. And uh, that's the kind of hitter we have in our lineup for like the first time ever that has this sort of brute power. It's like insane. right right now it's it's Machado, it's Mookie, 
are the the two front runner. Uh, Goldie's Goldie's up there for sure. Because Goldsmith plays for all the like Pete is serviceable, solid at first base. Goldie's unreal, former Gold winner. Uh, And that's his biggest hump, I think, to get over is Goldie. Goldsmith is on another planet right now. Uh, So that that would be a fight. But I like I like having a guy like Pete win an MVP. I don't I don't need to justify it in any other way besides if you've watched this team he is fucking valuable excuse my language no but it's true if you don't, if you don't like it don't like watch the game tell yeah. me he's not a valuable candidate like so i don't know uh in terms of guys that have played every game this season it's pete alonzo at 56 and then for some reason three nationals uh, juan soto cesar hernandez michael franco don't know why they're there too but good for them i guess but alonzo out there every day on the field i think he's only dh like five or six times he's played most of the season at first base and i think we he's liked... got like nine something like that i was trying to uh, either way ball. yeah yeah i'm with you look uh, at you oh. stat nerd oh my god you talked to him yeah jimmy is a big Pete Alonso fan, mostly because you can just plug him in as a guy that watches uh, a, a real, really watches a full season and gets to see how much value is in there, being able to plug that guy in literally every day into that, that cleanup spot. Um, it's It just makes all the other decisions around uh, a lot easier when you know you have that. Lindor had to break his finger to get a day off. Uh, <laughs> that's how it works. With but, Doug. but those having those two guys, it, it makes, it makes everything a lot easier. So I, I love that. I know you're, you're going to get a lot of shit on Twitter for yeah, making a first baseman over, over, you know, Goldspin. You didn't say he was going to win. He's a candidate. I said, he's a candidate. I know. Everyone so. was like, why is he the front runner now? Oh, this and his B war. And I was like, oh, come on, man. He had a, he had a home run and I got excited. So I tweeted something. Leave me alone. All right. You don't come bring on. up a B war, you B hole. Oh, get him. <laughs> Somebody clip that. Uh, so things are looking good now uh, with another Mets win. It set us up for uh, the remaining six games of this road trip. Our next stop comes against those San Diego Padres who have been playing a pretty good brand of baseball. They're 33-21. and 21. Jerry, tell me who's going head-to-head. Yeah, so this is going to be a big series as we travel down the coast a little bit to the border of Mexico to face off the uh, San Diego Dads. The Padres, <laughs> uh, we're going to face off. So for me, this is kind of a big moment. This is a big yeah. series because we're going to see Bob Melvin, who I am a huge fan of personally. We both rallied for him to kind of be the guy for the Mets. Um, we got Buck Showalter. That's the, the right idea. But Bob Melvin has righted the ship, it seems, in San Diego because his team is playing great. Their offense has kind of been weary, but they have the best rotation in the National League, if not in baseball. Uh, and we're going to see a little bit of that. In game one, we've got Cookie Carrasco and his 3.63 ERA going against Blake Snell and his 4.8 ERA. Snell missed all of April with an injury, had a kind of a rough start, went six and gave up two against the Cardinals in his last game, which is really good. Uh, Starling Marte, three for nine with a homer off of him. Jerks and Profar will play left field every day, I believe, for them. is three for five with a homer off Cookie. Uh, Cookie had a really good last outing, went five scoreless, uh, but he had those walks, which was like, we were there. That was our game. Yep. He pitched in front of his dad. The guy had more games started than, than walks allowed. Uh, and then he gave up five just to say, uh, stop saying that. Uh, but we look <laughs> for him to bounce back in game one. Anything you're looking for in particular? Yeah, I, I think that it's one a control thing for Cookie. I think uh, I'm hoping for him to settle in. He's also been sort of an on and off guy in May. He had one good start, one bad start, one good start, one bad start. So it's been kind of inconsistent. April, he was really good. Uh, he had a really good stretch there. Uh, so I'm hoping for him to right the ship a little bit. He's facing a um, not tough offense, but they're definitely consistent and they put, they're similar to us. They put guys on base a lot and they have that huge bopper in the middle of the lineup, Manny Machado, who hasn't seen a lot of Cookie in his career, which is good. Yeah, I'll cover that after we get through all of the games, uh, kind yep. of who to look for, who we're looking for. But that brings us to game two of the three-game set. That is Mr. Taiwan Walker in his 2.88 ERA against you, Darvish, in his 4.03 ERA. Uh, you, Darvish, looking great himself. Uh, the reason why I say the you from Little Soldier Boy action is because when he first came to Texas, I was in Oakland in the same division. 
his walkout song was that and it made Beautiful. the you know the old ranger stadium which they got a brand new one didn't need it i don't know what's going on but that was an electric walkout song even after you know soldier boy wasn't that cool the song his name's you Beautiful just perfect thing. just works He's nasty uh starling Marte, five for 13 off of said pitcher with a home run Marte might be just hitting jacks this series let's see luke voigt is two for seven. He is a uh, poor man's Pete Alonso. I don't mm-hmm. know. Uh, Jerickson <laughs> Profar, three for eight in his career, both with one home run off of Taiwan Walker. Uh, Darvish has gone seven plus innings in three of his last five starts. In Taiwan's last five starts, he's been stellar 29 and two thirds innings, a 2.12 ERA. More importantly, a 627 OPS against and no home runs allowed. He's really had that fastball running high that first half we saw last year that just gets by people um we're looking for him to bounce back game two you looking for anything in particular yeah uh, keep the ball in the yard he's been doing that for quite a while now i know i always highlight it but it's really helped him in the long run i think uh he had to work himself out of some jams against the dodgers uh and i think he did a really good job Uh, i'm looking for that sixth inning i want taiwan to get through six i feel like he's been through five solid a lot this year and the six is kind of where things fall apart because that's that third time through the order. So if he can get six for this Mets bullpen that really had to work these past two days, I think it'll be big. Ah, game three. This is a really fun matchup because Chris Bassett and his 3.74 looking to bounce back. Kind of, we need him to kind of pitch solid. Not a lot of pressure because he doesn't, he's not going to be in a must win. We hope not, but uh, he'll be going against his former locker room mate of the Oakland days, a a pitcher that we wanted to get on the New York Mets and Sean Manaya and his 3.77 ERA. These are the two big boppers from the Oakland A's that were yep. their, their top two guys the last few years. Um, two wonderful human beings. Uh, Sean Manaya, his brilliant, beautiful hair is going to be flowing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this matchup because you see uh, friends become foes. It's, it just makes for a fun subtext. Uh, Eddie Escobar, three for six in his career against Sean Manaya. Francisco Lindor, four for nine, both with homers. Uh, most Padres have little success or no at bats against Chris Bassett. There's no way to prepare for the funk that is CB. Uh, <laughs> Mets will avoid dominant Padre starters. Uh, Musgrove, who's looking like a Cy Young candidate for the, yep. you know, what a loss from the Pirates. He's been stellar, truly is probably the front runner and young stud uh Mackenzie Gore I was like what's Mackenzie his first name Mackenzie yeah. Gore looking like uh, just a great prospect since he's come up um that's going to be a fun game three I- I'm really excited they're going to be smiling at each other this is when I miss the the pitchers hitting because to see these two face off against each other two American League pitchers their whole career coming to see them swing the bat would have been hilarious but I, I don't miss the DH in, in most other aspects. I, mean, I have to say, I can definitely agree with you there. I think it would have been prime comedy to see Chris Bassett step up against Manaya. Uh, I'm going to have a tough time rooting against Manaya. We got to meet him. He was the nicest That's guy we right. met at A's camp. He was absolutely terrific, super welcoming. Um, but it's really interesting to see that him and Bassett are having incredibly similar years. I mean, you just Manaya's look at the ERA been, been doing a fantastic again. He's in a familiar place. Uh, Cause he's got his former manager, yeah. Uh, and Bob Melvin, you know, so it feels very familiar. Um, shout out to Dayton Flyer, my former college teammate, my former Washington national teammate, Craig Stam, and he'll be over there. Yeah. Uh, but really, the, what we're looking for is Manny Machado. He is hitting 333 after hitting like 390. His OPS is 959 right now. He's absolutely murdering the ball. Uh, a couple of other guys to look for. Hosmer, who we almost traded for. Yeah. Um, he's hitting 296, you know, OPS of 775. Uh, they really had some guys kind of wake up, though. Um, Profars have been hitting all right. Uh, Austin Nola, catcher's got some some pop. He's not really hitting the, the potential. But Jake Cronenworth, their second baseman's got some pop in his bat. Uh, it's really been pitching for them though. Yeah. They've, they've been dominant. They have those, that amazing, um, that amazing rotation, but their bullpen has been just as effective. Uh, they're a good team, man. We're going to yeah. see them. Uh, I love their uniforms, So that's going to be fun to watch. And it's just going to be, you know, hopefully we get to see a Bartolo Colon home run, you know, flashback because mm. everybody loves oh, they'll, sh- they'll show it for sure. For Every sure. time we go to Petco, they show it. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the three game set. Yeah, I think um, you highlighted Hosmer. He he batted like 400 in April. He cooled down in May. His numbers are still good, but he's not the guy that he was in April, which I think will work for the Mets a little bit. Still a dangerous hitter. Uh, we have some tough memories against him. You look at this lineup, not a lot of names stand out outside of Machado. It's kind of Machado and company. Um, Voight's been heating up as of late. They lost Will Myers. Trent Grisham has not been the same. Uh, their catching department is a little bit lackluster. Jorge Alfaro is having a good offensive season. It is the pitching. The pitching has been absolutely stellar at every corner in this rotation. Dodging Mackenzie Gore, who has a 1.50 ERA in 48 innings this year, is huge. Musgrove's been just as good in 66 innings, a 1.64. Those are two games that you are very happy to not if have you, to face those two. If you two. look at how good uh, Musgrove was in the month of May, I think he went like six plus and maybe no or one run or no runs in his last in the entire month of May. Uh, if you're listening to talking baseball at all, uh, they do their their pedals for the yeah. month winners, like they're you know who's who's ahead. Musgrove uh, for Jimmy was the guy. I think Sergio Alcantara was was kind of overlooked along with Sandy. Is, uh, but but uh, Musgrove's been that guy. So Dodgers yeah. have been great. Uh, and we just missed our boy Robbie Cano. Oh he man, got let go there. So that's sad. <laughs> Yeah, 33 innings, a 1.64 in May, uh, with at least six innings every star, never allowed more than two earned runs. And then his one start in June, eight innings, no runs, one hit. So Yeah, they're winning, uh, and their their offense has been underperforming. You know, Trent Grisham's hitting a buck seventy nine. That's a big yeah. loss for them. Cronenworth's hitting two seventeen, also down for them. Uh Hassan Kim's are hitting two oh nine. They just haven't been doing it offensively outside of Manny Machado pretty much all season. So He'll be a guy that's going to be getting on base via the walk probably a bunch. This is going to be a great series. Um, I'm looking to all three matchups, but for me, game three is the big one. I'm going to be tuned in, locked in. Uh, What else you got for us? Big series for the pitching to bounce back. That's the that's the key thing here. The starters mostly our bullpen did a great job last series. Uh, more nine forty starts, all three of them. They're going to be late night games, so get used to it, Mets fans. We're in the we're in the middle of the grind now. I think we have adjusted our sleep schedules. Here's a here's a question: Are we going to start seeing? Edwin Diaz deployed outside of safe situations on a regular basis. I loved it when it happened. I don't think it's as necessary in this series because this offense isn't as potent, but I think Buck made the right move and got the wrong result. And I hope that doesn't like deter him from making that decision again in the future. Cause I do think if Lugo gets the save, that is your best course to a victory. I think having Edwin there for Betts, Freeman and Turner was just a smart move. And I, I think, agree. you know, the closer role is a little bit muddled. I still think you should have a closer. Like Edwin Diaz is our closer, but you want to use your best pitcher against the best hitters. That's just that a was, I solid agree. formula. That's, well, man, this is, there's a reason why you do this because you nailed it. I was going to say basically the same thing. Um, yeah. The, I think it was the right move in the Dodgers series because they're part of that order is, you know, MVP. They're all, all have MVP votes. Um, Mookie, Freddie, Trey Turner. Uh, these guys are fantastic. You don't have that in San Diego, at least outside of Manny Machado right now. So you can pitch around him uh, at any given point. Don't let him beat you. He's the Juan Soto of that lineup. But they've been really pitching well. So we, we are going to need some offense. We need Nemo to get going. He kind of looked a little, yeah. you know. Yeah, and so if we can get him, McNeil going again, we need guys that just put the ball in play, put some pressure on the defense. So I'm looking forward to it absolutely all right i think that's all i got dude me too sweet thank you guys for tuning in let's go mets let's go mets we will see you guys on thursday to talk more mets baseball and preview that angel series that wraps up the west coast trip thanks for listening we love you have a great week